There's an A402 lead. I've put one wire onto it there now, just at the end there. And I'll put this other one on. Okay. And that's on there. Now, to give you an appreciation of how small these leads are, you can fit about five of these onto a pinhead. These are the 0402s. 0401s are smaller. You get them in the strip. And uh, I just grasped them, uh, half of them, with those other videos I've done uh, years ago showing you how I solder onto these and the 0603s. But yeah, these are, um, these are just tiny little buggers. There's a uh, A402 lead that I've just soldered the wires to there now. We'll just test him. Put the lead tester on. There we go. So there he is now illuminated. And we're going to get, um, these are O-scale brass caboose lamps. And I've got a, I'm going to take time up with the video. I've got a, uh, an 0603 lead there that I've just soldered some wires on as well. This is this Hobby King wire that I use. It's a 36 gauge Turnigy AWG wire gauge. Uh, we'll, um, oh, that's off. We'll put this on and show you the red there. So there we go. We've got the two lens ports for the caboose and that that we can put uh, a surface mount lead up inside. Now the important thing that you've got to do with the leads, and I'll demonstrate that with this one that I've just made up here. Just stretch that out a bit more. I'll come back out with the camera. I'm using Arlene's clear gel tacky glue. Apply, applies clear, dries clear and strong. This actually shrinks. So if I, better off doing it this way to show it to you I think. I'll um, take that one off there and we'll put this other one on now. Uh, come here. Just using the lead test that I've got. You can make your own lead tester up. I'll try the other way, Lauren. Uh, Murphy's Law, one way or the other. First time wrong. Let me get this one working. Okay, so there's a warm white. Now, I'm running out of glue. I love this stuff. I use a hell of a lot of it. Uh, she's starting to come. All right. What we do with that, we go straight into the glue. Whoop! Straight into the glue. You see what I'm doing there? So what I've done there now, maybe a bit too much. I've now insulated that um, that lead, and I've got the peg there that's holding that to um, uh, just hang onto it there. That's a little bit too much. I'll just take some off here. We'll take some of that off. It's just got to cover the uh, solder pads is the main thing, but this is going to shrink. And when it does, we can orientate it. Now, usually that is dry first, but we can orientate it into the marker. So that when it goes up inside the marker, you with me? You get that and you can get the light so that it comes out the two lens ports and... Um, just leave it holding there. I'll let that one go. So you can see, there it is there now. Now, what we're going to do there next is we're going to tint that because that's too bright. And they either had yellow, uh, orange or, um, or green. So we'll just do it in orange, which I normally like for my own cabooses for the Denver and Rio Grande. 
Okay, here we go. I put some glue there. I just put the glue, a little bit of glue there. Make a bit more up there. Now there's the glue. There's tacky, tacky gel still. Same glue. I'll just put this lid back on it. And what we're going to do there now is we're going to tint, tint this so we can apply it onto the lead or into the lens port. So we're going to use Tamiya X26 Clear Orange. And we get a piece of that. We put it into the glue and we mix it up. And you see that's just going to be thin. And we just grab a piece of that. And then we put it into the lens port. Very carefully. Now we have the orange colour and we made up the lens port. And what you can do there now, you can keep adding a little bit more and you'll make that that um, that curve, the bubble of the glass. Put a little bit more on. And the white at the bottom, just use some um, black acrylic paint and that'll cover that one up. So we'll do the other side. Now, that's not quite as bright, because we need to orientate it. Orientate that light, so that we get an evenness. There we go. That's pretty even between the two, between the two of them there now. And just set that aside, let that dry, and then we can assemble it. So that's how I do my caboose marker lamps and that um, pretty easy and you get a good result out of that um, the black paint I'll do that as well while we're here and just uh, use another toothpick and I've just got some um, black tube paint Again, trying to work around the camera in front of me. We just cover the hole. There you go. You don't see the whole uh, the light coming out the bottom. You've only got it coming out the um, the two sides. So you get left and right hand. These are Keith Keith Wiseman um, uh, brass marker lamps. I get them from Keith. I like. I prefer these, and I've. Um, Oops, I've chemically blackened these in blacken it and uh, that gives them a natural look rather than painting them and taking the detail away. So I hope that helps you guys who want to put um, lights in your caboose and that um, and there's I use uh, TCS FL4 decoders in the caboose uh, along with uh, animated guys and that. I'll show you that. Yeah, my markers look. There's the uh, caboose marker lamps on there now. Using the uh, red Tamiya paint onto the back, which I, I'll do that one I just did there with a the red, rather than the orange towards the back. And then I use um, fire flicker on that, and then the uh, kerosene lamp above his desk. These are all surface mount LEDs, a little guy waving there, but the uh, caboose lamps, they work pretty good. And down the back here, I'm going to move my chair out of the way here, and kids waving. There's uh, other caboose lamps here on the short caboose. With the red towards the back and this one doesn't have them because it's got the, uh, the lamp up the top with the red and the white to the front but they're the uh, Wiseman brass ones and I like those they look they look really good 
and you can fit an 0603 or an 0402 or 401 lead inside those and they come up really nice. As we uh, put uh, the orange on uh, on this one here, we need one red, so I'll use the X27 to me a clear paint. Get a little bit of red. We'll change that to a red. That goes on top of the orange, but now we've got a red one there. Maybe a little bit more red, you can see it. It's turned red to me, but I think the camera's playing tricks. Put a little bit more on. And I just put that on there with a toothpick. And that's red there now. Now we've got the... Alright. We've got the orange and the red. And if... Um, by using the glue uh, that thins it out but also bonds the paint in there pretty well if you ever need to get them out well it's only the glue it's not super glued in it's not hard so you'll be able to uh, get them out and if you don't have a lead tester like I'm using there now you make your own one up just get a, um, a 1k or 2k resistor on the negative um, going out Make a couple of clips up, and you can uh, test your leads there then. Uh, get a red. Oh, come on. And we'll get a black. Negative. Oh. Camera's in front of me again. There we go. There's the leads inside there. So a little lead tester, make it up out of a 9 volt battery. And the other thing, don't ever use um, wet sponges with your soldering iron. Get this, keeps it clean. You put a wet sponge in there, you immediately contaminate the tip. You cool the tip down with the water and, um, and the contamination is going to get into the solder and make a poor solder joint. Always use this curly stuff. It's treated so uh, uh, it keeps your tip nice and clean. Uh, that's about all I can do to help you guys who want to do um, your marker lamps. Like I said, I get a lot from Keith Wiseman. They're the O-scale ones. I do the same, chemically blacken them. I don't use the lenses. And that, as I showed, I just use the uh, Tamiya. Tacky glue. I love this stuff. It's great. Cheers.